Good evening, uh, good afternoon, and good morning. Uh, thank you for joining our information session for our uh, 2023 Art of Sciences uh, Winter Online Camps. Um, today, uh, we are going to give a general introduction about uh, uh, our summer camp, uh, winter camp, and then we'll have each faculty to introduce their class and the, also the TA will also introduce themselves. So uh, the uh, Art of Sciences camp uh, started from 2019 uh, when we had our first summer camp at St. Olive College. And uh, our goal is to give the students uh, opportunity to learn different uh, subjects and then to extend their knowledge uh, from beyond the schoolwork. And for this year's winter camp, uh, we are hosting it online, uh, and then uh, we will have our opening ceremony December 22nd, the Saturday, and then uh, our class won't start until Tuesday, because we know everyone wants to enjoy uh, your Christmas holiday. And the, the class was from Tuesday to Saturday um, during the day. And then the closing ceremony is Sunday, December 31st night. And from the picture, you can see we have a multiple class uh, run at different time. And you can choose the one fit your schedule and fit your interest to take. Uh, every student, you can take more than one class. So uh, to register for the uh, winter camp, you go to rmcacademy.org. And then on the homepage, there's a button that says winter camp 2023. When you click on that, that will lead to the winter camp registration page. So on this page, you are going to fill a registration form and to put in your basic information and the class you're going to select. And also uh, each class uh, is a large um, logo button. You click on those buttons to make the payment. So for today's information session, we are going to uh, go um, the introduction of each class following this order from machine learning and AI and then debate and Amy and business and Python and genetics and gene editing. And then uh, the last one will be the game theory. So now we are going to let uh, Daniel uh, introduce uh, himself. And then for all the faculties, when you need to go to the next slide, just let me know next slide and I'll, I'll do the click. Hi, uh, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Daniel. I'm a junior at MIT and I, uh, I'll be teaching the machine learning and AI class, uh, and the, which I taught this past summer uh, at, and during the camp. Uh, as some like background, I guess I major in computer science. Uh, uh, did programming contests in high school. Uh, also taught a bunch of uh, Java and like in high school, and also taught uh, some musical at the uh, uh, at AOS uh, online. Uh, and yeah, I guess uh, next slide. All right, so uh, this class uh, is going to be, uh, so there's three hours uh, and then three more hours uh, with a one hour break in between uh, from the 12 to three and then from four to seven. Uh, this is going to be pretty uh, intensive. We're going to cover like a lot. And then uh, it's from December 26th to 30th. Uh, next slide, I think. Recording in progress. Uh, so this, um, this course aims to basically provide, uh, some, a basic introduction to, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning and basically get the students interested and have them learn, uh, some of the things, uh, used there. Uh, specifically it's designed for high school students, uh, and like middle school students that, uh, with a strong background and, uh, does not require college level math, uh. And uh, this course does require uh, some knowledge of Python. Uh, so, so like uh, you should, uh, yeah. Cause you need uh, some uh, prior programming experience before you should uh, go into machine learning. Uh, in this course, uh, we're gonna learn uh, basics of building uh, various neural networks and training a neural network from data will gain hands-on experience by training our own machine learning models using PyTorch. 
uh, which is this library in Python. And also we're gonna experience some of the uh, world's best machine learning models, uh, such as directly chatting with like uh, some advanced models. Like uh, we did like ChatGPT, DALI, and some other uh, uh, models uh, during the summer. Uh, and then at the end, we're gonna work on a project uh, where students uh, just uh, actually train uh, and implement a model like for a specific uh, task. Uh, yeah, it'll be very uh, fun and rewarding. Uh, next slide. Uh, so what you need to actually have before uh, you take this is, uh, well, so first uh, you need to have some math background. So like algebra one, algebra two, uh, maybe geometry as well. Uh, uh, definitely should be, should have some uh, knowledge with Python. Uh, so some sample things you may want to be able to do just like to get yourself on the level is uh, you uh, want to be able to create a function that takes an integer and returns whether it's prime, uh, create a function that takes a list of integers and removes all duplicates from the list, uh, and then do some like uh, basic stuff with uh, Python classes. Uh, if you learn some other languages, uh, you should spend a bit of time uh, getting familiar with Python before taking the class. Uh, next slide. Uh, so this course lasts uh, five days. Each class is divided into two three-hour sessions. The first session, primary focus is lectures. Uh, so uh, we're going to like go over a lot of machine learning concepts. Uh, how like some certain types of neural networks work uh, and all the math and uh, reasoning behind everything. Uh, and then the second session uh, is uh, going to be kind of the hands-on experience. Uh, so this is where you're gonna interact with a lot of uh, the world's best models. Uh, you, this is where you're gonna program your own uh, machine learning models to actually do tasks. Uh, uh, and use PyTorch and do the programming. Uh, uh, yeah. I think uh, should be. Uh, oh, that next slide. Uh, yeah. Uh, so after this, uh, you can uh, you can be able to like after this class, if you're like interested in like further uh, furthering your knowledge, you can like. Uh, maybe uh, start uh, thinking about like actual like college level machine learning uh, if you're interested. Uh, although that may also involve a bit of calculus. So uh, yeah, uh, the the purpose of this course again is uh, it's it's not to be like it's not like a college machine learning class. It's to get students interested and uh, get students some like hands on experience uh, and like get them an idea of like what machine learning and artificial intelligence is all about. I think that's it. Um, hi, I'm Andrew and I'm currently a freshman at MIT. Uh, during high school, I did a lot of like math and computer science competitions and I was also a TA for the machine learning class this past summer. Um, additionally, right now I'm doing research in comp bio where I'm using like machine learning and like computer algorithms to model different biological systems. Uh, hi, I'm Arden. Uh, I'm currently a freshman in high school. Uh, I've had experience with math for most of my life and uh, I've I have experience with Python and Java. Uh, I've taken both Daniel. Uh, I've taken Daniel's Usico course and his machine learning AI course. And, yeah. Hi. Uh, my name's also Daniel Lee, just like the teachers. Um, I've taken Daniel's Usico course and his machine learning course uh, the past summer. Um, I'm a freshman in high school, and um, yeah. Hello, I'm Michael, and I'm going to be one of the TAs during the machine learning course. 
I already took the machine learning course in the summer, and I finished with a, a, an excellent result, one of the high score in the class. And I have a, a really strong experience in mathematics, and I also have a, a considerable amount of knowledge in Python and Java, so I can be here to help. All right. Hey guys, uh, I'm Ryan. I also have a lot of experience with math and computer science. And I've also worked a lot with Daniel before. I've been his TA and I've also taken most of all the classes that he's offered. Okay, great. Um, we will save all the question to the end. Um, we uh, now, uh, Hemos, you can go ahead. Hi, um, well, I'm Hemos. Uh, can you can hear me fine? Yes, no problem. Okay, great. So, um, as you can uh, uh, see, well, you, I'm, I'm from Harvard. Um, I was just we had the uh, the big Harvard Yale football game, which I'm on route back from at a rest stop. Um, we the big H award of the game. Fortunately, we lost to Yale, but that, that happened. Anyways, <laughs> so um, what will cheer me up, though, is talking about debate, because debate is something I've loved for a long time, and debate is something that I um, I hope, and I've tried um, over the last few years to get more kids interested in and uh, to, to train you guys up. So anyways, let's skip the intro slides and just get into the meat of it. Um, no, that's also too long. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> Okay, this one's good. So basically, the point of debate to me is pretty simple. It's really shouldn't be in your head about winning, losing these arguments, whatever. Like, it's not about can you convince your parents to like buy you PlayStation. It's not about like this like objective of victory in some tournament. To me, debate is about thinking clearly and really processing what other people tell you really understanding what your friend, what your parent, what your teacher is telling you really efficiently, really clearly, thinking at a high level about those things. It's about having a deeper conversation that every interaction you have just has a little more depth to it because you're able to think more properly. You're able to express your ideas more eloquently. So this is just like the three basic steps of what we'll, we'll try to cover. First, how do you make a good argument? How do you turn the jumble of thoughts in your head into something that's actually coherent and understandable to other people. Second, how do you deconstruct somebody else's argument? How do you find flaws in it? How do you find flaws in your own arguments? And so you can improve them or change them if you think you were actually wrong. And then third is how do you come across as persuasive? How do you have a persuasive voice? How do you have a persuasive body language? How do you do everything that is required to seem like a confident, competent person? So overall debate, I think, is is more important than ever. Um, one of the biggest things, you know, taking off from Daniel is is all the the, the new my, my other interests um, are largely in artificial intelligence and all this new stuff with ChatGPT and everything. You have to think about um, to in my book, what will we be doing when I grow up, and especially when when younger kids grow up. And I think a lot of it will be more in can you think creatively and think um, critically about the concepts in medicine and law and in, in programming, in science, wherever. And I am very grateful that I've had this experience growing up with debate to do that. And so the main aim of the class is to get across, again, that little bit more depth, that critical thinking depth to all um, of the, the those thoughts. So overall, the course will just kind of cover all the basics of debate. So no experience is required, though there will be um, a more advanced grouping for the more experienced people. Um, and it'll just be about practicing with each other, everybody teaching each other, me just kind of uh, making sure the general core concepts are covered and giving feedback to everyone individually. And then um, slowly together, we'll try to build cases so that on the last day, people can argue against each other. So the idea is to have like a complete debate experience that's both a lot of fun and hopefully um, quite useful. So anyway, um, that's that's the basic summary. Um, and if you have any questions, um, I'll put my email in the chat and I'm happy, uh, happy to field anything. But thank you so much.
Great. Um, Dr. Yao, you can go ahead. Uh, yes. So our AMA course is also a traditional course in our vendor camp, and we held it. This will be already be the third time, and uh, a little bit different would be the other. Then other courses would be that we never run the same content for each winter class. And so the idea for that is I know, uh, especially now we are getting back to normal. So many people are traveling. And so the idea is, so after we are running these AMA classes for a few years, and so we are, we are going to convert it into a normal uh, AMA class. Um, uh, parallel with our AMC 10, 12, and 8 Paramona uh, para uh, courses. And so um, uh, maybe next page. So Amy is definitely a challenging kind of like a competition. And even for me during the middle school, so I have attended Amy uh, five times since grade eight and uh, for three consecutive years. I, I can only get got 14 out of 15. And but one feeling uh, through my 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 personal feeling as a student to attend Amy, and even right now, you know, that things has already been passed for 30 plus years. My feeling is still that you need a, a very strong calculation capacity to 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 get a nice score in Amy. As although there are three hours to solve only 15 questions, but for many questions and the, 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 the workload is quite heavy. It's, and also that is, a, it is a, uh, I think there's also a balance, like for many questions, we have clever, there are clever ideas which can reduce the, the, the workload. But the thing is, if you, it takes time for you to really find a clever method. So for me, in many cases, I think it would be good that you have built up your own habit so that you have the strong calculation capacity that even if not, you are not that lucky to find the quickest method, you can still be able to tackle the question. So that would be one of the uh, the, the things that I try to explain in, cl in class and maybe next page. And also, we, we, uh, I think in order to, to achieve a decent scores in AMA, and we need to think why, you know, AMA problems are hard and how we tackle them. I think that uh, as things goes on and AMA problems are harder than AMC, the course, AMA problems are also easier than the USAMO. And why this mathematical competition problem could be getting harder and harder? Uh, I think one of the reasons would be because they cover small contents. Or, or more techniques, and for for the for the for the for the standard school math contest uh, exams, right? Probably it will be just test a particular formulas, and so each question is pretty much just a direct application of the formula. You locate the problem, then you locate it, you you use the, the, the corresponding formula to, to calculate that, it, then that will be it. And for AMC problem, that's slightly harder, but probably one one each question only have one trick. And then it will be easy that you find that trick, then you solve it. And uh, but for Amy, the difficulty level lies that there could could be, be there that each question has more than one uh, one one essential step, and there will be more tricks involved. So you have to 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 find maybe two or three combined tricks to work together, and so that you can get you you can solve it. So in that sense. What one thing definitely we need to do is we need to build our uh, to 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 expand our our toolbox. So you need to know the relevant kind of like the 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 the, the base the 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 the, the frequently or, or or sometimes used kind of like building blocks, right? So now here I mentioned a few like so if you know that at the combinatorial identity and then they may not it may help you in some of the calculations. And so here. The, on the left, I show like a, the typical structure would be, uh, you know, if we have uh, we have uh, two circles that are external tangent to each other, so there will be a typical uh, trapezoid that you can construct. And also that we can, we should not only stick with that, and we can extend it to the to the three dimensional case. And so and so in the three dimensional case, if you draw the, the corresponding center and radii for the sphere spheres, you will also see similar situation appear. So that kind of the, the things 
the the techniques and the, the some 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 not the, not the direct formula but some slightly complicated uh, statement is something that we have to 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 build build up in our mind through practice. Okay, so next page. <clears throat> and also another part of difficulty, Amy, is some some problems do not have a straight, you know, forward uh, direction to solve it, right? So I I think we can compare this with a with a challenging question to the chat GPT, right? Which uh, some people ask, you know, why the, the the parents did not invite the child to their to their weddings, right? And then then what chat GPT? I, I I saw the answer for chat GPT, which they also they, they always say that okay, so you know whether the parents uh, you know invite anyone to 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 his wedding or not, that 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 their personal choice, and you know maybe you can talk to them, to them frankly that you know that you feel unhappy that they did not invite you to their weddings, and all this kind of kind of like a, the 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 thing that. Uh, that are true uh, in in a general scenario, right? But it does not true in this particular case because you have to 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 in a sense think out of the box, right? Because uh, during their wedding, normally the child was not born yet, right? So you should think through the timeline, right? So in the AMA problem, it's the same, right? So sometimes you need to 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 set up a different direction to think, then you could figure out uh, uh, a clever solution. But then the question would be how you think, right? Why you go to this direction and so then it can solve it. Then this takes some kind of experience and also through some of the conditions, actually you could have, you, you could get a clue about that, right? So I show on the right and also the other example in the, that there's an AMA real problem. So the question is to solve, essentially solve this system of equations, but that system of equations is actually corresponding to a triangle with three highs are giving right so how to set up you know how to how to uh, when you have a difficult problem how we analyze and uh, through different directions so some parts we fail and the, the failure could also give us some hint and then we try to find the the, the right way and that is how, how we how this process is going is something that i want to try to explain and also the good idea i i feel that the, the good thing i feel is because our class has so many talented students and the students could create uh, create ideas so the, this scenario happens many in, in quite a few cases in my in my amc courses would be student promote some ideas so maybe they even don't know whether these ideas work or not, but I but it gives me some hint and so that I can we can we can go further and find some clever solutions. And so I think that's the interesting part of our course. And maybe next page. And of course, our course we will we will have five days course. So there are four major topics. So we have two days for geometry and then one day for algebra and next page and one day for number theory and counting probabilities. And so basically every day we will have 10 lecture problems and five homework problems all together. And so that we will form the whole course. Next page. And so these 75 problems will be totally, would be none of them would be the real AMA problems. So if you have time, definitely you can practice old AMA problems. I think right now there's almost probably 1,000. and. Uh, uh, also, these 75 problems will be different than the 75 problems in the past uh, two years. Okay, so I think now I will hand over to the TAs. Hi, uh, my name is Leo. Oh, wait. Um, so I did math competitions throughout high school. I'm now a student at Duke, a freshman at Duke studying math and CS. Um, I am, I took the Amy six times and I qualified for the junior math Olympiad twice and the Olympiad once. Um, I think, you know, the Amy is a great chance to practice problem solving at a high level. And I hope uh, throughout the <laughs> class, you'll gain the skills necessary to like learn, learn how to do these problems. I don't know. I am, uh, I'm Matthew. I'm the other TA. I'm uh, currently studying math and CS at MIT. I, uh, I did math contests in high school. Um, 
and uh, I hope uh, you enjoy the class. Thank you, guys. Uh, Dr. Meng, you can go ahead. All right, just give me a second. Let me uh, move my cursor over. Hi, everyone. Well, uh, many of you uh, actually know me. So uh, I very quickly go through my self-introduction. And uh, But uh, the content will be taught in the winter camp will be two classes, actually. One is uh, uh, N001. Uh, negotiation techniques, and the other one is a D001, business decisions and psychology. And uh, throughout all the business uh, education classes, uh, we aim to actually two side of uh, skill sets you can learn from the classes. One is really just a basic business concepts. In this uh, in these two uh, classes, we talk uh, negotiation uh, techniques and skills uh, through all kinds of uh, simulations and in-class activities. And the other is really soft skill, which is actually we promote the student to uh, learn how to present, how to negotiate, how to listening, how to write, and uh, how to manage their time and uh, how to do a teamwork. So uh, all those uh, part is actually kind of a built-in, built-in uh, um, uh, virtue within the business class. Next slide, please. And uh, uh, through the past years, actually, we have a collaboration with Arts of Science uh, since actually 2020 summer. And I still remember when the first time when I put this uh, uh, timeline, I only have to put in like a three bars. And right now I had to squeeze all the 2020, 2021, 2022 activities all together. But if you look at if you look at the whole process, you can notice that uh, we are kind of trying, at least we're trying to rotate through all the business topics we are going to cover. Uh, for example, in 2020, summer and winter, we actually focus on marketing strategy. And 2021, we focus on business strategy, especially in the internal uh, business analysis. And uh, last year, we actually focus on fundamental finance. We talk about uh, financial statements and we talk about the IPOs and we talk about evaluation. And uh, this past summer, it's actually we moved into a new uh, stage, which is we talk about uh, business operations. In especially talking about global supply chain there. And so for this winter, uh, those two classes, N001 and D001, those two will focus on uh, rather essential skills. And the beauty of those two classes is uh, we don't have a lot of homework burden for the students. And uh, most of the activities should be finished within the class. And uh, there, well, uh, I won't lie to you because there is homework, but the homework, the, the goal for the homework is really to encourage students to get a better experience through the class learning. Uh, but those two classes, you can register individually because I know some of you actually uh, uh, maybe learned one of the classes because those are rotating classes over the year. Um, so I, I do encourage everyone to uh, give students uh, a chance to learn what is real business and uh, what does uh, business uh, plays a role in our real life. Next slide, please. Okay, so this diagram is actually showing the relationships uh, of all the business topics uh, for the whole program. And in particular, you can notice that uh, Back in uh, 2020, we actually focused on marketing track, but not all the not advanced classes, but rather initial uh, initial classes. And in 2021, we focus on strategy track. And uh, uh, last year, we focus on finance. And uh, this past year summer, we actually focus on operation. So as a future advertisement for the summer camp, the business class will go back to the marketing track. So uh, marketing track is always what I consider as a fundamental to understand how business uh, operates. 
And the during the winter time, we always offer the special topics classes because those classes are not are not offered uh, um, uh, during the weekend classes. Uh, they only the week weekday classes. So this uh, uh, this uh, winter camp, we are going to do the negotiation and zero zero one and D zero zero one business decisions. And uh, I actually have another class. Actually, uh, many students actually ask me for uh, uh, for that. Well, parents, um, which is actually business data analysis class, which will be uh, probably next winter winter camp. So this is a really long advertisement, but keep tuned, and we'll have uh, a lot of uh, topics uh, uh, you can learn. Uh, that's all. Oh, yeah, that's you. all the details. That's all the yes. details. Yeah. Okay, great. Hi. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hi. Uh, my name is Laura, and I will be teaching the uh, Python class. Um, this is uh, the second time I teach at the winter session, but I have been teaching a, a kind of a longer session during the summer. Um, so a uh, brief introduction of myself. Um, I am WNCS major and uh, uh, during my daytime, I'm an engineer and uh, engineer manager, um, but I have been teaching uh, program languages uh, since uh, 2000. I uh, teach both at, as part of my work and as, also as part of my hobby. I teach uh, C++, Java, and, uh, and the Python. Next page, please. So what is this uh, class for? Uh, as you can see from the title, this is the introduction to computer science. Uh, we are using the Python language. And the target audience is uh, for students with a little or no programming experience. And uh, from my experience, it can be um, some really precocious uh, elementary students, uh, very few, and uh, some uh, middle school students and lots of high school students. Okay. And um, some people uh, really want to know uh, uh, what I learned, um, uh, what can I do after I learn uh, the Python from this class? Usually I view this as uh, two uh, directions, uh, mainly for the, uh, from the student's point of view. You can prepare for the usable bronze level. Um, you know, I, uh, previously I also uh, tutored people who preparing for the usical. And uh, for the bronze level, Python is uh, you know, really sufficient. And another way is that um, just for students who wants who want to learn uh, how to coding, and Python is an excellent excellent uh, first programming language to learn, and uh, you can use Python for example to write a program just as a hobby, or you can prepare for some like a middle school, high school uh, science project uh, like uh, data analysis or uh, you, know, um, you know, also some gaming. I have also, you know, really uh, depth into writing a computer game. Um, so the goal of this class is to provide the students with the really a good understanding of how computer program works. You should always think, you know, computer program is a way you communicate. You, you speak your own language and how you convey your uh, thinking to the computer. You need to tell the computer using a language that the computer understands and give the, in, uh, the instru instructions for the computer to do whatever you want to do. A second part is really to train the uh, students to solve a problem. When you read a description, when you read a problem, you need to understand how you construct a program and how you, you know, really design the steps and tell the uh, pro computer to solve your problem. I always say the computer does exactly what you tell it to do. 
Another part of the goal is really to make the student feel confident. You know, uh, you know, you feel good. The, the, I think if I can summarize the class is that I want you to feel good. I want you to feel proud, proud to say I can code. Okay. So the class is taught as a Zoom format, and the recording will be available after the class. Homework. There will be homeworks, and but I understand that the winter session is short, so I make the homework optional. But just as you learn a language, uh, practice is really more important than the class. Okay, and um, so if you, uh, although the homework is optional, I really encourage you to do it. And also, you can take as long as you want. I have received the homework like three months after the class. As long as you send me the homework, I guarantee you will receive feedback. Next page, please. So um, for the hardware requirement, I um, you need to have a laptop. Uh, but I have also seen people using the uh, tablet. As long as you have a keyboard, I think uh, a mouse, it will be good. A uh, phone will be a little bit difficult. And then the software requirement, I think the Zoom will be good. And I will you know, really help you to install any IDE from simple to complex. And you do not need to worry that you need to install anything extra. OK, next page, please. So here are the topics. Uh, again, those are the five days. And those are the, you can see the topics ranging from what is really the programming. And when you look at the computer, what are you looking at? The CPU, memory, uh, the hard disk. I will explain that to you. And then we will start from variables, expressions, and going through the data structures and uh, the functions. and uh, we will wrap up with you know really introducing what is the object oriented program. Uh, that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Okay, so um, sorry that my camera is not working right now, but um, I will be teaching the genetics and gene editing course. I recently graduated from MIT with a bachelor's in biology and um, I've been working uh, in base editing and gene editing. So uh, next page, please. So this course um, is going to be five lectures from 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. And our course is designed to take students on a deep dive about genetics and how we can apply um, the scientific uh, kind of knowledge of genetics into gene editing technologies and how the science behind these gene editing tools can be applied to developing new therapies for treating diseases. And so the pacing of this class will be kind of fast. So even though we will be going over some um, kind of review of uh, basic molecular and classical genetics on the first uh, during the first lecture. Students are recommended to have some introductory biology and chemistry knowledge prior to the start of class. Next page. And so this is a tentative outline of what topics we will cover over the five lectures. Um, this may change slightly depending on uh, how quickly we are able to get through the materials, but day one, we'll be going over classical and molecular, ge molecular genetics. And then day two through day five, we will be going over some of the new uh, gene editing technologies that have been uh, invented. And we'll talk about the science behind those technologies as well as how they have been applied to treating different diseases. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Uh, Timothy, are you here? I think so. Yes, I should be. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Wonderful. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Timothy. Um, lots of information on the slide, but um, just of it is I'm an undergraduate student at University of Alabama studying math and chemistry um, and also in the accelerated master's program. I've taught the camp for about mm, three years now. Um, and this will be my second time teaching the game theory course. If you want to go to the next slide. All right. So to introduce this course, I want to give you guys a scenario to think about. Okay. Scenario is you are offered $100 
and you get to choose how to split it, okay, between yourself and me. You could do 50-50, you could keep 80 for yourself, give me 20, whatever you want. The catch is, after you do this, I then get to choose to accept your offer, and both of us get the money you divided, or I can reject it and no one gets any money. The question is, in this scenario, how much money do you offer me? How much of the 100 do you keep for yourself, and how much do you offer me? So what's interesting about this game is that from a logical perspective, if you even offer me $1, a single dollar, I should take it, right? Because if I reject the offer, I'm getting zero, as opposed to getting one. So you could keep 99 for yourself, give me $1, and I'll accept it, and it'll be great. But my guess is most of you would not do that. And if you tried to offer me just $1, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not gonna stand for that. I'm probably gonna reject that. But why? Why would I deviate from what seems logical? So if you could go to the next slide. This scenario is called the dictator game, for those who are interested. And it's a common game we look at. Um, and there's a lot of reasons people might break from the expected uh, expected decision. And so one might just be greed. I don't really care about a dollar, I want a lot more. Or maybe I want to spite you, that you only gave me one dollar, that's not fair. I just want to reject it just to spite you. Um, perhaps I care more altruistically. I care that you get money. Maybe you maybe need the money a lot more and I care about you, so I'll accept it so that we both get money. Or alternatively, maybe we're going to interact again in the future, and I don't want you to think that I'm just going to roll over. And so I'm going to reject it so that you offer me more money next time. So what we did right there is a lot of what this class will look like. The idea of this class is to, is to look at the field of game theory, which often analyzes real world scenarios through simple games. Okay? That game I gave was two steps. It's pretty easy to follow. But the dynamic at play there actually applies to a lot of more complex real world things. And so this course will be an overview. Um, if you go to the next slide for me, wonderful. Um, we're going to learn a lot of different kind of fundamental ideas of game theory. Okay, and the different ideas of this is to understand the major concepts and dilemmas. Okay, and I won't get into what all those are. You can take the class if you want to get into what all of those are. But the idea is each of these will be different scenarios that exist in the real world in kind of more hidden ways. And we'll isolate it and look at these fun games. We'll play these games to explore these dynamics. And then we'll look at how we can vary the game and how that changes things. And so we'll look at um, maybe how things being cooperative versus competitive changes things. Uh, does it matter if people are anonymous throughout it? And so we'll look at these different factors and see how they impact it. And then lastly, and this is where I think the utility of this course really comes in, even if you're not going into game theory, which I'm guessing most people won't, this way of thinking and understanding these dynamics lets you identify them in the real world. Um, game theory comes up in just a lot of different scenarios. Um, Dr. Meng, I'm guessing in business, I'm sure has studied a lot of these things. Yeah, he's, he's, he's studied a lot of these things, but I know a lot more than I do about these, being honest. Um, I guess these come up in the way you approach decision making and just how people think and how you uh, design different systems. Um, okay, go ahead to the next slide. Yeah, so this leads us to why to take this course. Um, this is one of my favorite courses to teach. Um, and one of the first one is it's a really easy course to teach through activities and examples. Um, by definition, the field is game theory. And so basically every class, I will be introducing games. You will get to play them. Last year, and I'll do this again, we did an ongoing competition where you earned points throughout the whole week. And there was like a leaderboard and such. And so there was actually a stake. You got gift cards if you won. And so there's actually a stake to doing well in these games. And then we'll look at that as a model for other fields, for real world concepts. And we'll work on kind of bridging the gap between these hypotheticals and real world scenarios where this is useful. Um, so yeah, that's my pitch. Here are the next page. 
Um, logistically, this will be uh, 4.30 to 6.30. Um, be just two hours each day, five days in a row. We'll do some sort of count fun tournament on the last day. All right, thank you so much. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. I hope to see you there. Great. Um, so as a summary, uh, here is the website for register. And then after you fill in the registration form and make the class payment, we will start sending Canvas invitation next week. And all the class will use Zoom and the recording will be kept for available for a year. And also to advertise for our in-person summer camp next year, it will be July 7 to July 20, uh, 2024 at St. Olive College, Northfield, Minnesota. So now we can open to questions. Um, you can either put the question in the chat or you can um, you can just open your mic and talk. Oh, uh, for today's, yes, we will have a recording and then we will post a new WeChat link with the update, including the recording for today's uh, information session. Anyone have any question for any of the uh, faculties? Yeah, maybe go I ahead. answer the question in the in the in the chat. So some people ask if um you have a score on AM ten ten for about a hundred points. So whether it is uh suitable to attend the AMA camp. I think it will be more like if he has already mastered all the pretty much the basic high school math content. And if he, he already mastered that, and uh, <clears throat> I think attend Amy class, so that will be definitely a challenging class for him, but it's still he could still get some benefit. And uh, it's all it's actually always my 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 view that you know if you you prepare for something and uh, uh, you for some exam, if you want to get full mark on that exam, so you have to prepare for something that is harder than that. And if you can even solve the harder problems fluently, then definitely uh, you have the you have the capacity to to tackle that relatively easy exam. So that's that's my suggestion. So there's a question asking which class will be good for sixth graders. Um, I think a lot of the class are introductory level, like the Python class, and then uh sixth grader can understand the concept in the business class for sure and also as well as, as debate um I, I guess game theory i think it's better to let your students read the description on the website and let them decide which one are more attractive to them any more questions can i ask a question please Sure. Yes. So basically for business uh N001 and D001, there's any there's no prerequisite for the no. for the business class, right? Okay. No, no, you can register just either one. That's fine. Right, right, great. Thank you so much. And the same question goes for game theory. No prerequisite, right? Correct. Yep, yeah, you can register for me. Okay. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Um, I have one question. Not um, to the for the win, winter camp. I'm more, we are more interested in for like AMC twelve class. Maybe it will start next March, right? Not to, because we just finished one round. The next round will start in March next year, maybe yes. for AMC twelve. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Thanks. Uh, if there's no more questions, uh, you can always uh, thank you for everyone for attending. And then you can always contact us either on our website or by email or by uh, WeChat. Um, and thanks for all the TAs. Uh, looking forward to a good um, winter camp. <laughs>